little girl. Is she about 10 days, 8 days old? That's pretty cool. What we got? What's that time again? 3.12. Felt like it. I mean, I know there's still a lot of season left, but given the difficulty of that road trip, come back home for the break, sell out crowd, I mean, it's just an important win. I mean, how bad you need this? Hey, you don't ever uh, look a, a W, you know, anything. It doesn't mean the season ends. I try not to put too much importance on one game because tomorrow, you know, you're going to face another good pitcher. We knew we were going to have to pitch well tonight to stay in the game because that's a kind of given when you face them. And that's what Tillman did. Chris was pretty good tonight. I thought uh, Jonathan probably accounted for four or five runs tonight. The uh, force out at second, you know, on the one double play. A lot of people don't try to make that play. It's a great clock by J.J. Knew when he had time to come off the bag a little bit and come back on. And then the imagination it takes for for Manny and John to – that's something analytics just can't show is the, the imagination that players have to have to – execute a play. Not many guys turned that double play and then made a great tag. Not many people make that tag on the steal. And I'm probably missing one. Since there were four of them I made note of. It was a four. Well, he had two double plays turned. Then one that most people take the out at first and put the pitcher in real uh, in a little tougher spot. But John uh, impacted the game on a lot of, so- lot of, lot of fronts tonight. Have, have you seen him since he's been back? I mean, is... is he now the the Jonathan scope from from last year. I mean, do you feel like he's? No, we've kind of looking for the guy that was was there before he left, before he got hurt. You know, John. Uh, I think we sometimes, like I said before the game, we forget about how young guys like him and Manny and and Bryce and all those guys are, and we kind of, you know, they get thrown up the flagpole at a very early age, and that's certainly they inflict that because of how good they are but uh, you know John's got a chance to be a good player and it's unfortunate because it looked like some of the challenges he fought through last year and the growing pains we're going to start so yeah, it's still going to take a little while it's like all these guys uh, you know that come back they start off fairly comfortable and then they go through a period where they kind of hit the dead arm period that pitchers hit in spring training just kind of Baseball gods remind them that they can't just stay out that long and just come back like that. And hopefully, uh, you know, John will be the first to tell you that everything wasn't perfect tonight, but it's hard to do. I mean, they're a very good pitching staff. But still such a well liked guy, even when he came back the, the day before he actually played in Chicago. I mean, what does he add? To he, just, he just has an infectious, uh, you know, I, I don't want to. John doesn't take himself too seriously. He's very team-oriented. He's, uh, he uh, has a lot of respect for his teammates, especially guys who have been around longer than him. He's, he's a sponge. you got to be careful about throwing too much at him because he listens. You know, he's getting good at kind of taking out what works and what doesn't. And you know, The thing that you know, we stress to everybody, and so does Washington and all clubs, is you, know, you can impact the game on both sides of the ball. It's not always. The pitching is so good at this level. That's the biggest jump in the level of play from the minor leagues the big leagues is the pitching you face every night. We're going to see two more. And uh, we're going to have to pitch well again to stay in the games. I know you said you don't want to put too much importance on this one game or anything, but a couple of guys before the game said we just kind of need one big hit in a big moment. Does it just feel good to get that big hit? Yeah, I mean, I'll take that, and we'll, we'll all take that. But, you know, you're a uh, Zimmerman Scherzer outing away from then what is the answer. You know, I, I, we live in reality, and um, this is – He's the best players and best pitchers in the world. I mean, it, the momentum's the, the way you pitch and the way they pitch the next night. So it's a good W for us, and um, we'll see what the next two days bring. Do you feel, lineup like, is, pardon? Do you feel your lineup is demonstra- demonstrably strong or with scope in it? There's some nights it's it's strong with, with Ryan Flaherty in it, and it has been in the first half. Ryan has had a pretty good first half for us, and he'll play again maybe tomorrow. We'll see. But uh, uh, it gives us some – Maneuverability and some some what ifs around the infield that we didn't have. We had to kind of invent Steve there at second base, and you know being able to make some moves and not worry about if we're covered in extra innings. It, it gives you a little more comfort level, and you know John can play shortstop or third base. Ryan can play just about anywhere in the infield, and so of course Manny can too. To have three infielders that you can move really to all four spots is, is makes it a lot easier to withstand some of those one or two day injuries. 
Buck, you can understand why everybody wants to talk about scope tonight. Could you talk a little bit about Matt Wieters no. and how can he, how he impacts? <laughs> thank you, Buck. Uh, how he can impact a game? No, because, Matt. Matt, you know, it, this is what you like about Matt. You know, Matt had had he had three or four games where he was a little struggle with a bat, and it was a day game, and uh, you know, usually he gets there early to go over all the hitters that we're going to face that night when he's catching. But he was in there early, which you usually. Just, you know, he, he's not going to give in to saying it's just a period i got to go through. He spent a lot of time in the cage that day. He came out with, I think, three hits that night. Matt's not going to take mediocrity. He's not going to just say, well, it's just something i got to go through because I've been out. No, he doesn't. He wants it to end after every bat. And what do you have, three hits tonight? And um, I, I tell you, I, I try to keep in mind, John and I were talking the other day, Russell, but, you know, this guy hasn't caught in over a year. I mean, there's some things uh, little by little that will come back to him catching, too. I mean, it's, and you know, we got spoiled at a very high level. So I, th I think some of the um, little things that you take for granted with Matt, you know, kind of come back to him the more he's back. There. It's tough staying consistent with a bat when you're playing every other day. You know, it really is. And that's something that uh, he's got to work through. You know, we're not going to do the back to back again until after the break and see where we are. But you talked about, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You had talked about. You know, Chris keeping you in, Tillman keeping you in the game. Mm. Um, he's had some troubles once you guys have gotten the lead, holding on to that lead this year. Um, you know, not or not giving it back, whatever. Is there a, a concern or something that's not there, or is that just? No, not when he holds that them to, to two runs in six innings. I'll take it and take our chances. You know, just because we only scored one run, run off a very good pitcher, you don't say, okay, he gave up a run. I mean, I don't think anybody felt like we were going to win one nothing tonight. Okay, so I'll take that out in Chris head and but there's been many times when he's gone out there and, and pitched better and better as the game went on. But that was a, uh, you know, he, he just he wanted to get through six innings for us because it set up pretty good for a bullpen, especially where they were in the lineup with Darren in the seventh. And it, we're, it allowed us to keep it close. And, you know, Zach pitched another solid inning. And Brad gives us a weapon against some left-handed hitters because of some things he can do with the ball. You feel, Chris, you feel Chris is getting getting back? I mean, getting kind of getting. I don't, you know, tonight he was. Let's see what the next outing brings. He was working on an extra day today. That doesn't usually always work well with him, but you know, we'll. Uh, it's tomorrow. Y'all wanted the rotation, right? Okay. So, you know, I know where these guys are going to fit after the break, and um, every challenge, what happens this good or bad doesn't mean it's going to happen next time. That's why we we come to watch the games. Me too, because I. I wish it was played that simply. We just would plug in the computer program and go with it. It'd be awful boring, though, wouldn't it? You, talk, you talked about that internal clock that infielders have yeah. going for the lead runner. Let's go for two. You can't teach that. You can't. It's just something that I ask all the time, you know, about a guy's clock. That was something Manny's clock at third base we knew was going to be a challenge for a little while, and that's why, you know, Bobby Dickerson had him out early in Bowie for about a month and a half before we brought him up here working at third base before he actually did it. Just tr That was the last thing to come. And, um, you know, we talk a lot in advance about foot speed. You know, the ball top spins more at the major level because guys are stronger. The runners are a half a step faster. There's so many different things in the big leagues. I think Abreu hit a ball in Chicago that doesn't get hit to you in the minor leagues with top spin glove side. And there's just a clock that you have to develop and you know, we try to teach it in the spring by using that shot clock, but when you have to hurry and when you don't, and double plays. I mean, you can't sit out there and as Manny's feeding John the ball and say, hurry, hurry, hurry. You know, it's something that's got to be there. And, you know, all good infielders have a good clock. I don't think anybody ever had a better clock than Brooks Robinson. Okay, thank you.